Do you dream of adding your very own book to the collection of books that have already been written? Do you wonder where to start or how to finish? Does the idea of writing a book seem too overwhelming? Do you just want to polish up those writing skills or stay motivated? Do you wonder what to write about? Everything you need to help you write, stay motivated, and self-publish your own book is right here on one channel. And why? Well, because it's time to get over the writer's hump and just do it. You can write anything. Yep, you can write a book. Hello, everybody. I am excited that you are here on a book. And today I have a wonderful guest for you. His name is Tom. And Tom is an excellent author who is going to be sharing with you today some really fun stuff. He's going to talk to you about some books that he has written. We're going to discuss, like we always do, writing in general. And, um, you know, just sort of enjoy the conversation today about writing and about Tom's book. So Tom, welcome to the show. I'm so glad you're here. Hey, Laura, thanks for inviting me. It's very cool to be here. Yeah. So, hey, listen, Tom, why don't you go ahead and maybe tell us a little bit about yourself and some of just touch a little bit because we don't want to get too far into it yet, but a little bit about some of the books that you have available. I know you recently came out with a fairly new book. Yeah, okay. I guess we'll start with what, what's most current. My new book is called Research Randy and the Mystery of Grandma's Half-Eaten Pie of Despair. And if I had to describe it in a sentence, it's Encyclopedia Brown meets Cthulhu. Um, it looks like a kid's book. It's really more for grown-ups. I'd say PG-13, but um, and it's more creepy than terrifying, I would say. And uh um, it, people seem to be really enjoying it. So yeah. that's, the, that's the most current work. That's exciting. Well, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you got started writing? Um, you and I had the opportunity to have a little bit of a discussion the other day. And so I know a lot about your background and, and writing has been a big part of your life for a very, very long time. But why don't you share that with our audience today? Sure. I, I think the term journeyman kind of comes into play here. I, I have been writing for a long time. I started writing um, roughly around, I'd say, 1990 or 1991 when I was an undergrad in college. I went to Wayne State University up in Detroit, and our college paper was a daily at that time, uh, Monday through Friday, with a distribution of about fifteen to 20,000 copies a day. So it covered the whole campus area and Wayne State is in the city so uh, the surrounding areas as well it was a pretty well-read newspaper and my girlfriend at the time in college was an editor there oh. and I had really fallen in love with film and I wanted to write about movies and she said well why don't you start writing reviews for the college paper and I thought well you know I love movies I love talking about movies let's give it a try and it, it came pretty naturally. And uh, I think that's from having read a lot of film reviews and understanding how people talked about movies. And so that was my start, was, was writing film reviews for that newspaper and a few other publications early on. Um, and that led to many other forms of writing. I worked in marketing, I did technical writing, I've done script writing mainly for uh, educational and commercial videos as opposed to screenwriting for film and TV. So I do want to make that differentiation so that I'm not misrepresenting myself. And then that led to creative writing. How so fun. I've kind of been all over the place with it. And if I understand correctly, you've also taught. Did you teach journalism? Uh, I, I did teach journalism at the high school level. Uh, I did a big career change uh, in the early 2000s. I had kind of um, sort of like reached the end of the road with marketing. Uh, it no longer really did much for me. And I had the opportunity to do a career change. So I went into education. Um, I had found myself in Florida um, and they needed teachers desperately, which once again, they do. Uh, we're right back to that same problem, but I think everywhere they need teachers. Yeah, they do. It's a very tough job. 
and I would have stayed in K-12. Um, if, if it, it's hard, it's hard. It's just, it's a, it's a small salary and life is expensive. So yeah. I really couldn't stay in K-12. I ended up moving up to higher ed, but in K-12, uh, specifically high school, I taught journalism and TV production at West Boca High School. I taught creative writing um, at Full Sail University, which is a media arts college here in Orlando uh, for about 10 and a half years. I was also a chair in that department. And the oh, course wow. that I taught, yeah, the course that I taught, my main course was uh, Developing New Worlds, which was a world building class. And, oh, uh, how fun. What a, oh, it was like the best class ever. I just got to nerd out with my <laughs> students year after year oh. and uh, get paid doing it. It was really a wonderful job. I've, I have since earned my doctorate. And uh, now I'm uh, one of those, uh, you know, administrator types. So what um, is your doctorate in? It's a doctorate of education. Okay. So, right. yeah. Um, so world building, tell me a little bit about world building. And I, I obviously we don't have time for you to teach an entire class on it. Yeah. Maybe someday though, maybe one day you'd be on here teaching a class for us. But, but right now, just kind of touch on that. I think, is that like character development or is it really just um, fantasy development? What is that exactly? Well, I think the best way to describe it would be what my students were hoping to get out of it when they came into the class. And so these are young, you know, young aspiring writers, whether it is they want to write uh, novels or for games, video games or tabletop. Um, a lot of them had ideas for anime. Uh, anime is very popular with my students or otherwise, right? Um, the the main thing is is they've grown up with these universes. So you think of something like Star Wars or Lord of okay. the Rings or things like that, where they're these fully blown fictional universes that have fictional cultures and rules mm -hmm. and histories. And the big word is lore. And you see this uh, across all the mediums. So um, these young writers coming up, especially, this is something that. Um, they're very excited about creating for themselves with their own work. Oh, but, okay. you know, building a world from scratch requires a lot of thinking and a lot of planning. Boy, and does it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it can be quite a lot if you're not passionate about it. So uh, what I did is I, I taught them a very quick system for determining what their needs were in terms of how much world they had to build to tell the story that they wanted to tell and uh, sort of let them play to their strengths. So, wow. you know, that is a in. class. I think that would definitely have benefited me in my previous book. So um, for myself, I'm a nonfiction writer, although my last book was a fiction fictional book and it was a fantasy book and it took place in two different realms and I had to create these realms. And I don't know that I captured that really well. Um, it, I, there was a, it's a story inside of a story. And so we, it takes place in today's world and then transports the reader into these other realms. And so I don't know that I captured that really well. So I probably could have used a class just like yours to sort of um, teach me because I had never done it before. So that's pretty exciting, I think. What did your what do you think the biggest takeaway for your students was by the time they were done with that course? I think the biggest takeaway was that I need to sit down and 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 do some preparation before I start writing. That it's not enough to have a cool idea or visual in my head if I really want it to be something big, something expansive, something okay. that um, would be celebrated because the other thing about IP and if we look at something like Star Wars is that uh, Star Wars is very popular and it's been very popular for a long time so when you're wanting to build your own world you have to kind of look at these things that have large fandoms like the Marvel Cinematic Universe or even uh, Twilight or or something like that and say what is it about this fictional place that uh, attracts so many people. 
um, okay. that they, they they really want to learn as much as they can about it. And, uh, you know, they just, they, they uh, create costumes, they cosplay because they love this fictional play so much that they want to be the characters. They want to physically manifest this okay. fictional universe into their lives. Um, so you said something that has me thinking um, because so many people that I meet that I run across um, are brand new writers. You know, the, this show, for example, is really sort of dedicated to somebody who's just starting out and writing and, and doesn't know what to do and doesn't have a, a clue as to how to go about executing what is in their brain. And so you said something that was key and you said it had a lot, something to do about planning. And it's not just about telling the story, but that there's, that there's some planning that goes into that. And I think that that's really important maybe for an, a new writer to hear because I know for myself, and I don't claim to be a prolific writer by any stretch of anyone's imagination, but I know for myself, it's always been about, I just want to get it out of my head. So what are some steps that people can take when it comes to actually planning? Is that more than an outline? Is it, um, I guess that's just the question there is what steps can somebody take to plan that? Well, you know, I think it's a very individualized process. I'll certainly give you my thoughts on it. But um, what works for me may be uh, hell for, for someone else. And uh, I do see writing as an art. And um, uh, everyone approaches art in their own way. But this is true. for me, for me uh, I need a basic roadmap before I work on something this long form, like a novel, okay, a short story or something like that. I can go in guns a blazing and just kind of write something up and see how it feels. And that's not that big a deal. But if you're going to write a 90,000 word, 100,000, 150,000 word book or more, if you're a fantasy writer, people expect a solid brick to be delivered to their house when they buy a book now. Correct. Um, you're, you're in for the long haul. And if, you know, I said, hey, let's um, drive um, from New York to um, the most Southern tip of South America, would we not get a map out and plan some stops along the way and figure out how the, how the car was gonna get down there? Um, right. I think, yeah, right. So when you're doing something long form, I think it's important to have, it can just be a bullet point outline. I, some people will meticulously outline uh, every scene, every step of the way. Um, I don't have the wherewithal to be that detailed with it. And there are plenty of writers out there who they just wing it from the get go. Uh, that has never worked for me. I have a lot of unfinished works from not sitting down and sort of figuring out like, you know, what what the structure of the story was going to be. So I know it doesn't work for me, but the method that I do uh, for novels, uh, you know, which I have, I guess, three now, is I use scene cards. So um, I write out um, the like just a word or two describing what I want a scene to be on a three by five card. Okay. And I lay them out on my desk or on the floor. And I just keep adding them and moving them around until it makes sense to me. And then I leave it for like a week. And then I go back and I read back through it. And I'm like, does this story make sense? And then I make notes on the little cards. And then I stack all the cards up. And I'm a chronological writer in that I start with the beginning and I end with the end <laughs> in terms of my writing process. So I just go through those cards. And also, um, it, it creates a level of closure. When you're working on something long, it takes a very, you know, it takes a while. Yes, it does. Complete. It does. And you can get lost in the middle, the long middle, as they call it, where you're enough into the book where it's starting to turn into a thing, but my goodness, you have so far to go. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm in the cards, middle of one of those right now. <laughs> are you? Are you in the long middle right now? I am. I am. And it, and I'm so anxious to get to the end that what I'm afraid is I'm going to rush through this middle and leave out some key 
elements that are really important to the story. So I'm trying to slow myself down, which is really hard. I was I was really smiling when you were talking about those cards because that's how my husband writes. He likes to get those cards out and he wants to be able to organize them and move them around. And and I just can't do that. That that to me is um, so laborious. <laughs> and yeah. I am probably one of those wing it kind of people where I just get in there and what's in my head, I write it and I just get it out. And then I will go back and rearrange and cut and paste and and all of that. So you're, you're right. And you are correct in saying that everybody has a different style, but I am, I, I, I know that for myself, one of the things that I probably need to work on is that structure from the very beginning. I need to have a better framework going into my writing than what I have in the past. And so, I, and I think that lends to this idea that nobody starts out as a an amazing writer right it comes with a lot of practice a little trial and error and we can learn from our mistakes and we can learn from each other it's an ongoing evolutionary process I, I fully believe that I think I've said it and I'll probably say it every show that I do my first book was a piece of garbage it really was I still have it up for sale it's more of a reminder to me of where I've been and where I'm going, because I think my writing gets better and better with time. But it's when I pick up little tips like this, like, hmm, you know, maybe that's that's something I need to work on is that beginning structure that really helps in my growth. What do you think about that? I, I agree. Uh, if you um, have a favorite musical artist who is exceptional, with whatever instrument that they play, whether they are a vocalist or a guitar player or a piano player or whatever, uh, and you go to one of their shows, uh, what you're seeing there is thousands of hours of practice. Mm -hmm. You know, um, right. very few of us are born uh, as prodigies where right out of the gate, you're just naturally incredible mm -hmm. at what you do. Um, writing is 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 uh, challenging in its way in that um, whereas you can get together with other musicians and kind of learn off them in the moment, writing is a fairly solitary activity. And you, I can't, you know, your husband can't put his hands on the keyboard with you and you can't collaborate that right. way. That's how <laughs> collaboration works when it comes to writing. So you really, you, got, you have to be there within yourself. It's later when you uh, get feedback from other people and incorporate that feedback or just go through, you know, the revisions yourself to try to figure out where it is. Uh, but it is about putting the time in. And uh, writing um, is homework. Uh, basically every day for the rest of your life. If you, if you pursue writing. <laughs> if you so choose, yes. Yeah. If you so choose, not that other art forms don't require the same level of devotion and 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 work ethic, but writing it can be lonely. Uh, it's it takes time. Unless yes. I mean, I know writers who can crank out like five thousand words a day. I've never been that person. Yeah. My my that. goal generally for myself when I'm when I feel like I'm in what I call writing mode and it, and it does come and go for me. I'm not somebody who can write every single day, but when I'm in the zone and I'm doing it four days on end is I try to set up at least a chapter a day. And if I can get through one chapter a day, then over a period of time, pretty soon I have a book, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that That's how I do it. I don't know. Some people, they, they can, sit for hours and hours and you know on that note how do you stay motivated when you well, are when you've started on a book you've done you've done your framework you've um, done your outline and now you're ready to just start implementing all of these ideas and you've gotten to that what you call that long middle and you've gotten there and ugh, you know it's the hard part that's the hard part how do you stay motivated to get to the end of that book well um it's a lot of talking in the mirror and saying you can do it. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> but I, the, what works for me, and and I, I was really blessed to start in journalism because journalism is hyper deadline oriented. Right. And as a writer, if I wanted my story in the paper that day, then it had to be on my editor's desk by 2 p.m. or it was definitely not getting it. 
And so I've been very task oriented and very deadline oriented from a fairly young age. I just got programmed that way. So I set personal goals um, in terms of like, um, uh, for example, now that Randy's out, I have to select another writing project to work on. And I have two fairly close manuscripts. So I have to sort of do the Sophie's Choice and decide who's going to get my love uh, for the next year or two. And um, I will set deadlines, you know, um, in terms of how many pages or how many words or uh, where I need it to be by a certain date. And then I will, uh, knowing how much uh, output I can do, given that I have a day job and, you know, family and friends and, and all these things and hobbies, and I will determine how much time I need to reach that goal. Like, you know, if I can commit to say 500 words a day, Monday through Friday, then I'm going to turn out 10,000 words a month. Right. Okay. And so, was, so for you, you know, the motivation like really comes in, in the, it sounds like you hold yourself accountable to whatever um, schedule you've put yourself on. It's just a matter yeah. of you holding yourself accountable to that. Am I correct? Yes. Um, I don't, I just, I'm wired that way. I okay. know it's more challenging for other people. So do you, you have, ever get writer's block? Um, well, I think sometimes um, when I'm searching for an idea and it it may not come to me like right in the moment, like if someone's like, I need three ideas like right now, I'm not that person. Okay. But I'm a, oh, I'll go out for a run and come back with a ton of ideas, you know, yeah, uh, sort of person. So, so I, I when those say, ideas hit, they, they just sort of hit all at once. They, and they always come at very inconvenient time so, <laughs> when you don't have so, a pen and paper to write them down right <laughs> right so uh you know what i would say to anyone listening who's starting out any idea you have um right before you go to sleep uh you will not remember it in the morning no never I do highly recommend you write it down uh if something keeps you up until three in the morning it's probably a pretty cool idea and you should definitely just at least uh, take a few get notes. up and take notes <laughs> Take right. notes, right? Because right. they're going to happen, you know, pretty much whenever they happen. But in terms of writer's block, when I am working on a writing project, um, I don't typically encounter that um, because I'm a vomit draft person. Okay. Uh, I just write it. I don't care if it's good or not. Sometimes I'll be writing a scene and then in the middle, I'll just say, uh, so-and-so says something really clever and then does something that's really interesting. And I will go back to it later. And add in that clever and interesting in. statement. I'll do it like in all okay. caps so it doesn't get so, lost okay. you know, yeah. in the thing. Um, but I just, I just spit it out. Uh, okay. And I liken it to what is taught to me, which is, you know, a sculptor starts with a block of marble or whatever and then chips away. Um having pages with something on them is better than having blank pages, even if it's terrible and first drafts typically are. Yes. Yes. I going to be bad. It's just going to be bad. I agree okay. with that. And, and my thought is just get it out. I have met too many people who they want to write, they have a story to tell, but they won't because they can't get it perfect the first time. And this is what I tell them all the time, just get it out. It doesn't matter because you're going to go back and you're going to change things a dozen times before you end up with that final, that final draft that you want anyway. So just get it out. Well, it won't make sense or it's going to sound dumb. And, and I can't spell well, you know, all of these excuses. But what I tell people is just get it out. That stuff can be fixed and changed later. Oh, it's great. If you if when you get a draft and then I again, I recommend taking a week off from it and like getting clear of it for a little bit before you go back. It's like someone else wrote it for you. Like, you know, you'll yeah. find things to be like, yeah. oh, that's really good. I wrote that. Or you're yeah. like, oh, man, I really need to fix that. That's terrible mm -hmm. or whatever. But at least mm -hmm. you have something to work with. So I would, you know, say to anyone who's starting out, like, 
first of all, you're the only one looking at the writing right now. Yes. Um, you know, give yourself permission for it to be bad. Yes, and, uh, uh, absolutely. You know, you'll, you'll, you'll figure it out in, in multiple drafts. You know, there's, mm -hmm. there's um, uh, uh, a book by Albert Camus, The Plague, and I won't go into the whole thing, but, you know, it is about a, a plague time. But there's a character in there who's a writer, and he's been writing a novel for 10 years, but he oh. keeps writing the same first paragraph. Oh, boy. <laughs> Never gotten past the first paragraph because he so desperately wants it to be perfect. Perfect. And it's a writer joke, basically, that's in this sure. in this novel. But, yeah, um, uh, editing while you write, which is a method that some people use um, that works for them, definitely does not work for me. And will most assuredly mean that I won't get get the project done. And I think, to be honest, I don't think that works for most people. There are writers out there who do do that. They edit as they go. But I think the majority of people will write out that first draft and then go back and edit. So that's I just think that that's um, probably the norm you know, yeah. of how things are done. I would like to talk about your latest book, if if you don't mind, Research Randy, and I'm reading it here, and the mystery of grandma's half-eaten pie of despair. What a title. And it is the book that caught my attention. And I said, I need to reach out to this author and have him on the show because um, here, let me, let's just go ahead and try to share this with our audience so that they can see. Uh, give me just a second here. Well, where are we? Well, let me try to, to do, I wanted to do a screen share here and for some reason it's just not, not letting me. Oh, well, I don't know if you can do a screen share on your end. By the way, we are recording this on Zoom for anybody who's watching. Oh, here we go. Let's go ahead and do this. All right. So this is on Amazon. This is Research Randy and the Mystery of Grandma's Half-Eaten Pie of Despair. So if you are interested in this book, you can hop on over to Amazon. You can also get some more books by the same author. All you have to do is just search for uh, Tom Lucas and you'll find more of his books. But this cover caught my attention. I thought it was fabulous. I loved it. And I, I wanted other people to get to see this. So what is going on here in this cover? What is this story about? Tell us a little bit about this. Okay, so um, Research Randy is uh, an analog for the character Encyclopedia Brown, or really the archetype of the brainy kid detective type character. And um, he's poking at this pie um, which, you know, obviously has something very wrong going on with it. <laughs> and behind him is his sister, Charlie. And Randy is the, the, the brains, the technology, the science kid. His sister is, um, she's the muscle of the group. And she's also um, a sensitive. So she has a little bit of a psychic ability. Uh, so, you know, mm -hmm. the... the perception is is this has been a long running series of books and throughout the years these two characters have solved mysteries both mundane and supernatural um for the delight of, of many readers over the years but um the the frame story is that the author of this series this long running series uh has encountered something that has corrupted his mind something uh -oh. evil <laughs> Yeah. And so he's writing this final last book in the series where nothing is going to work out well uh, for anybody. And he's somehow being forced to destroy his own creation. So the book has a meta aspect to it. Uh, it breaks the fourth wall at points. Um, towards the end, reality itself becomes questionable as the book starts talking directly to the reader the characters talk to the author, they talk to the reader, and it starts to sort of uh, spiral into madness. Um, where this all comes from was uh, several years ago, I was at a writing conference and there was a pitch workshop and I came up with a pitch for Encyclopedia Brown meets Cthulhu. Uh, 
everyone loved the idea in the workshop. I we all wrote up one sheets where you, you know, sort of list what other books might people might be reminded of, and you do like a one line, like a log line, and then you write a very short synopsis of the story. Okay. Everyone loved it. And uh, but nothing really came of it at the time. Uh, later on, the opportunity to uh, the, the the manuscript was solicited. Uh, and so I actually sat down to write it. And when wow. I sat down to write it, I realized, OK, this is a great idea. How do I execute this idea? Oh, you know, and so that's where the sort of the meta frame aspect came from and and where the whole thing ultimately comes from is uh, I, I was a, a voracious reader from an early age and I loved Encyclopedia Brown and the Hardy Boys and Nancy Drew and every other kid detective story. I read all those books. So there's a aspect of nostalgia um, that I wanted to sort of instill in the book. So for anyone who grew up reading books like this, it's going to feel very familiar, but it it gets weird. It gets it'll get a little bit weird, right? Okay. Yeah. So I looked at this cover and you mentioned the word nostalgia and that's instantly what came to my brain. So I did you design the cover yourself? Did you have somebody else do that for you? Okay, so the cover was painted by an old friend of mine, Mark Beery. Okay. And he's an artist. He's a fine artist. Uh, he's up in Brooklyn okay. uh, in New York. And he also painted the cover to my previous book, uh, which people can find on Amazon or my website called. Well, Pax let's on that note. Hey, let's go over to your website just real quick okay. here. I want to I want to share this with people. Let's see if we can't do that. Um, yeah, let's just go on over to there and take a look. Sure. Because you you have other books. Um, so if beautiful website, by the way, anybody who wants to get to your website, what is the um, what is the web address here? Room1331.com is all you need to type in. OK, uh, for whatever reason, WordPress insists on adding that home dot blog. But room1331.com is all anybody needs. To OK, type in there. Room 1331 for anybody who wants to go to this website. And this is you. That's yeah, you there. Spoken yeah. Word event. yeah. Nice, nice, nice. But if we were to click on your books here, if I can get my mouse to work. Let's click over to your books and take a look. Yeah. Now, are all of these your books? Well, some of them are anthologies that I'm in. So, okay, okay. Uh, Pax Titanus, which is the uh, second from the right. Mark, okay. uh, who painted the cover for Research Randy, also painted that. So, this and is that, the other cover he did. Okay. Yeah. And then, mm -hmm. because I, you know, I like to work with friends, uh, if you scroll back up a little bit there. Sure. Uh, Leather to the Corinthians, uh, that cover was drawn by Mark's brother, Sean, who's a commercial artist. So oh, okay. I worked with the two brothers. Um, I had always loved their work individually and together. And I like working with friends. So when the time comes that I need artwork, I usually turn to one of them. Mark yeah. also did a number of outstanding interior illustrations in Research Randy. Research oh, Randy okay. has about 38 to 40 interior illustrations because it really does mimic the form of a, a kid detective book. Even though the content is something any adult would enjoy reading. Yeah. Right? Any, I, any I just want to make that, that clear. I don't want somebody to, to walk away from this thinking that it's just another kid's book because it's, it's way beyond that. I, I would definitely. And thank you for pointing that out. And I would say to anyone, it's PG 13, uh, you know, you 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 probably know what your kid reads and what your kid likes. Some kids would really enjoy this. Um, others, it may be a little bit too much for them. You know, it, it just depends it, on what people enjoy reading. Yeah. Yeah. So, what other books in here are yours? You talked about Leather to the Corinthians. Yes. That Leather one is yours. Was my first novel. Pax Titanus was the second. While okay. we're looking at this. Um, that row, Writer's Path, I wrote the introduction to that book. I nice. wrote the introductory okay. essay. It is free on, well, I think it's called Draft to Digital Now or Smashwords. It is okay. um, a set Smash of essays Works. from 
from recent graduates of the writing program that I used to work in and about what happened after school and how they started their writing careers. So oh, you know, wow. anyone that's... looking for some, you know, uh, some good uh, advice, it, there's some in there. That, that sounds pretty inspirational. That That is something I would encourage the viewers of this show to go check out for sure. Because, um, you know, when you when you get to hear from other writers, that's pretty exciting. I like that. Yeah, it, it was it was a real honor to be able to write that introduction. And Mondo so, Bizarro, what is, tell me about this. Mondo Bizarro is an anthology okay. of uh, weird fiction. And pretty much everything else that's on the page there are anthologies that I have stories okay. uh, placed in. Okay, so there's quite a bit here. You, you've dabbled in quite a bit. Yeah, uh, I would like to be in more. Um, I took a detour with that doctorate. I spent three years writing academic papers, uh. Uh, which was still writing. So it's still working that writer muscle, but uh, it was not the the fun, weird, creative fiction that I enjoy putting out there. And I would just want to remind people again, that website is room uh, 1331, right.com. So they can just go yeah. to room 1331.com and they can find your website, check out your works. And, and there's some other stuff here, you know, your written works, there's, yeah, there's um, some other interviews that you've and... done, things, things like that. So definitely yeah. worth checking out. There's a lot on this website. I'm pretty excited about that. But, you can uh, even yeah. contact me if you want to. Yes, they can contact you. So what is your favorite part of the writing process? Oh, uh, so I, I'm going to break it down, down for you. There's okay. that moment when you get the idea, you know, you have this idea. Then there's the actual execution of that idea, the actual writing part of it. Then there is the editing part of it, um, which I hate. <laughs> I have a good editor. <laughs> I hate editing. There is the proofreading, editing, all of that. And then there is that moment when the book is finally published. And I, I think Everybody loves that moment. That's what we do this for. But for you, what is your favorite part of that process? Well, uh, you know, aside from obviously having a, another child out in the world, mm -hmm. uh, I, I think that when the first draft is completed is a, a really incredible feeling. Um, I, uh, my, my wife chides me on this. The actual process of writing the actual writing is work in my mm -hmm. mind. Mm -hmm. It is work, uh, it's not fun. Um, there can be times where I will get some joy from feeling like I had a successful day or something cool happened. But in general, the actual process of writing is the work part mm -hmm. and so it's not fun. I love generating ideas. I, I do love preparing. I, I like you know a light sort of research phase and gathering things together. And, uh, you know, uh, what, once the juices get flowing and, I'm, you know, brainstorming, to me, that's a really enjoyable process. Um, and then there's that when I, I like have written a lot more than am writing. If you're going to use a hashtag online, <laughs> uh, have written is uh, more popular to me. My wife insists that some people really love the actual writing process, and I have met those people. Uh, they're definitely on a different frequency than me. Uh, it's cool that they they get that uh, joy from it, but I, I prefer once the work has accumulated oh, and uh, okay. editing isn't fun, mm. uh, but sometimes- I, There are people who love it. There are, yeah. they enjoy it and they like to edit other people's work and, and all of that. I am not one of those people. Fortunately, I have a very dear friend who is, and <laughs> she is excellent at it. But, so I would say for me, if I were to think about what my favorite part of the process is, I am one of those people who enjoys the writing. I like maybe not the physicality of it, you know, the hours of sitting at my desk and the actual typing. And, and I'm blessed because I can type as fast as I can think. So I can get my thoughts out rapidly. But I will look at something that's come out of my brain on that piece of paper, whether, whether it's done, whether um, it's per perfect or not. And I'll say, that was pretty cool. Yeah, I can't believe I thought of that. And there's just, I can get very lost in that. It's a great way of escape for me. I can escape more by writing than I can by reading. 
And that okay. that's just maybe how I'm wired. So I think everybody um, can figure out for themselves what part of that process is the most enjoyable for them. Yeah, and I would say, you know, uh, it's come up a few times in our conversation thus far for anyone who's starting out, who's listening. There's no one way to do it. No. There's no right way or wrong way. There's your way. There's your and way. Right. As long as you end up with having written something, uh, however, whatever works for you, you know. Yeah. So, uh, so my thought that. is the average person, because these are the people for whatever reason, um, the God I know keeps putting these types of people in my path. And these are the people who keep coming to me and saying, how did you do it? I've always wanted to write a book or I have an idea for a book, but I don't know what to do. So, you know, and, and we can all give advice based on what we've done, but I'm going to, I'm going to deflect to you as an expert here and say, what would you say to say that average, you know, that average housewife somewhere on a farm in Iowa, who's, who's busy and maybe um, for months and months, she's had this idea of a book in her head and she, she wants to write, but she she doesn't have that confidence to do so. What would you say to encourage her? Well, uh, one of the things that I would do with my students in the class, uh, a question that I would ask them is, what brought you to writing? Like, what? why did you decide to come and study writing? What was it that happened that you know, gave you the bug, you know, gave, gave you the, the need to do it, right? Uh, it's not easy to, to make it in this world as an artist or a creative person. There's no guarantees whatsoever. If you want guarantees, go to a trade school, learn a trade, and you will always be in need. Plumbers don't lay awake at night wondering if anyone likes their plumbing. Right. Um, you know, or or if they will uh, plumb again, you know, like um, that's security. So I would ask them, like, you've chosen this fairly risky pursuit. You know, what was it? And the majority of the time they wrote something small and they got positive feedback on it. Right. So don't start. If you've never really written before, write small. Write a, a, a short story, write a poem. Um, I don't know how popular it is anymore, but for a good long stretch, flash fiction was quite quite popular on the internet and flash fiction. Well, what about blogging? What would you say about blogging? Um, I think blogging is definitely an avenue. Um, if you The thing about blogging, I think in order to be successful, is you've really got to attach it to something that you're passionate about. Mm-hmm and and make that your territory so if your passion is collecting beer cans from all over the world then that's probably the blog that you should be writing at least to start out because you will have something to say and uh, uh, a wealth of knowledge to share that you can over time uh, everyone i know who blogs has probably had a couple different blogs over the years till they figured out the one that really uh, came naturally. The one that gelled, right. The one that right. just gelled. So, okay. So, so you ask somebody, what is it that gave them the writing bug? Where did that yeah. come from? And, and then, then what, where do you take well, them from they'll there? Say, well, they'll say, oh, I wrote a story in high school and um, everyone loved it. Or I wrote a piece of uh, fan fiction and it got a lot of upvotes on like Wattpad or one of these sort of sites and, and people wanted to hear more. And it, all you need is uh, a, a small victory of some kind to give you enough confidence, I think, to move forward. So I would say, just really start small. The book will come, right? Um, books are marathons. Uh, you don't just say, hey, I'm gonna run a marathon. You have to train for it. So Build up you to it. it you run around the block and then maybe you try to run uh, a mile and then maybe you try a 5k and you build up, you know, those muscles over time. And once you, you start, you know, when you, when you breach the barrier and you start sharing your work with other people, you know, getting those encouraging words 
uh, we'll 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 put that fuel, I think, in the tank. But yeah, you know, just just start small. Flash fiction is fiction that's under a thousand words. A uh, great place to start. You know, okay. write right. a scene. Just write a scene from the story that you want to tell. You know, the first couple pages, whatever. You know, um, give yourself some time. Yeah. You know, yeah. And make mistakes and. And just try and to make enjoy. mistakes. And that's just it. I, I just want people to know that they have permission in writing to make all the mistakes they want because the mistakes can be fixed. So we live in a world where we text each other in abbreviation, LOL, BRB, um, and we are still able to communicate with one another. That is not good uh what, what am I searching for? That's not good literary structure, correct? <laughs> but yeah. we're still communicating with one another. And so again, I just, just, it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to not get it perfect the first time. It's okay to, you know, maybe mix up your tenses for a while until you get straightened out on that and you learn as you go. Some people just, um, now, having said that, I'm just going to say this. There are some people who just should not write. You know, they just don't have the skills and their brain's not wired that way. Um, sure. I probably should not be in a field where math is required because I'm just not like math is just not my thing. I'm better with words than I am with numbers. But there are um, there are people who are good with words. They just they don't maybe don't have all of the the tools that they need in their arsenal for whatever reason, but they can get those as they go. And yeah. so I just really want to let people know you can write. You don't have to wait for permission. You don't have to be perfect. You don't, do not have to be an English major or anything. You can just, just write. So that's, yeah, I don't know. You know I, I say that, I say that, I say that because I just want people to know that they can do it. Yeah. And it, it doesn't matter where you are in your life, whether you're old or young mm, or, or mm -hmm. whatever. There's there's nobody telling you that you you can't do these things, uh, right. so just so just do them. You know, um, yeah. yeah. Some people have more of a natural aptitude than others. Some people are more natural storytellers mm -hmm. than others. But um, if, if you study your craft uh, in time, things start to make a lot more sense. the The other part of it is is that uh, feedback uh, can can sometimes uh, be a bitter pill. Um, yes. you, you have to be willing to get feedback if you want to get better. So that, and that's you, you know what I would say in regards to feedback, it feedback's important. It is, ugh, I can't express that enough. And for myself, when I was brand new at writing, I was terrified of that, but I learned not to show my work to people who are just critical for the sake of being critical, that I want constructive feedback. If you're going to, to criticize something in, in my work, that's fine, but have a plan of, of solution. Tell me what I can do to fix it. Don't just criticize for the sake of criticizing because we can all, you, you and I could read the same book and I might say, oh, that was a terrible story. And you might say that was the best book I've ever written or I've ever read. So criticism, um, just for the sake of being critical is not helpful to anybody. And it certainly isn't helpful to you as, as a writer. But if somebody says to you, well, I think you've used the word detriment too many times in this paragraph, you might want to find another word that's helpful. Yeah. Or if they say, you know, you said something at the beginning of your book and then never mentioned again. And it left me curious, whatever happened to that character. And you may go, Oh, I hadn't even thought of that. I had just forgotten about that character altogether. Those types of things are helpful, but we don't find those things out if we're not willing to share our work with somebody. Right. Um, I, th I think it comes down to, to, to just kind of summarize what you're saying for folks, is criticism is not critique. Critique is pointing out, oh, you have word repetition, or, you know, this this seemed to be missing. Very or, good. Mm -hmm. You know, these sorts of things. Uh, and critique is to the work and criticism is often given to the person in some way as well. Mm -hmm. um, but very, very, very well writers, stated. Yeah, finding other writers, I think, to share your work with uh, primarily is is 
a better move uh, in that they will be able to give you more of the critique aspects. Mm -hmm. Whereas mm -hmm. folks that are just readers um, may or may not have that vocabulary. Uh, for because they only know what they like. Yeah. They, they don't understand they're the process readers. of it. Mm -hmm. readers, right. And that's who we're writing for is for the reader. Correct. Yeah. 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 So, um, and it can be tough. Um, putting your writing out there is a very vulnerable thing. Um, yes, it is. You, you are kind of exposed on the page. You are. Uh, for who you are and what your capabilities are and, 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 and everything else. Um, I, I think in other art forms, that's true to an extent, but I feel that writing is particularly vulnerable in that way. And it can, it can be really gut wrenching to, um, to uh, put your stuff out there. Yeah. You know, there's a picture of me on my website doing spoken word. I've done spoken word for a long time. Um, there was a time where, when I didn't have anything out there, that the only way I could get people to um, hear my writing or experience my writing was to read it to them. But I will tell you that in over 30 years of doing spoken word performances, I still will find my hand shaking or a leg twitching. Uh -huh. uh, it's nerve wracking. It's, it's you know, I, I don't think I will ever shake that. I don't have the ego that would allow me to <laughs> not That's have good. That That's good. That mean that yeah. means that you can improve. I think when somebody thinks that they they they're it and they know everything, that's when they're they probably don't know very much and they are incapable of improving because they're closed-minded. Well said. Yeah. Tom, if you were going to leave our audience today with one thought about um about writing in general, what would that be? Um, I think you should try it if you haven't, if you, if you have any thoughts, you know, it's risk-free, uh, no lives are on the line, you know, uh, write down your story journal, you know, blog about your favorite recipes. I don't know. I, I think it, you know, at least, at least try it I, 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 because writing does require some work. Um, I don't think it's necessarily like the first thing that people think of in terms of creative expression. Uh, usually you have read something that just made you want to be a part of the process. You you read a book that just wowed you so much that you thought, I, you know, I need to, I want to contribute to this very long running conversation that we've mm -hmm. had. Uh, you know, uh, storytelling is the oldest uh, form of communication. Yes. An anthropologist may debate that and probably be right but the fact is is we've told stories since we've been on the planet it's absolutely the oldest human behavior and uh um there's a reason for it um st story teaches us it elevates us it makes us think it carries messages it entertains it provides escapism it does all these things so uh, if you have something to express um and you know uh, the written word interests you, you know, I would say try. Absolutely. Least, give it a shot. You know, yes. write a poem. Yeah. Right. Write yeah. a lovely letter to someone. Oh, that's write so a good. Story, you know? So good. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I want to just share one more time before we get you and I go that um, people can get your latest book on Amazon. And it's called Research Randy and the Mystery of Grandma's Half Eaten Pie of Despair. Again, I want to let everybody know the, the cover is awesome. This is not just for kids. Any adult would enjoy reading this book. I'm excited about this book. Um, I just, I think you, you've you done a wonderful job here. So I'm excited about that. But again, you can get that on Amazon and then let people know one more time. Room 1331. Room 1331.com. 1331 uh, we don't have the time for it, but that was a haunted hotel room that I stayed in. I didn't uh -oh. know it was haunted at the time. <laughs> And uh -oh. I have immortalized it uh, with my web address. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Story for well, another day. And we are, I'm looking forward to when we have you back on for sure. You have so much to say and you have so much to teach and to, to share with our audience that um, you've just been a delight. I am so glad that you were willing to be on a book today. I'm just, I'm so excited about that. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Oh, I had a lot of fun and I'd be happy to stop by anytime. This is oh, great. 
for yeah. sure, for sure. Well, listen, you have been listening to Tom Lucas, and he is the author of a few books, most recently, Research Randy and The Mystery of Grandma's Half-Eaten Pie of Despair. So you'll want to check that out on Amazon. We've been talking today about writing and particularly Tom's process and all of that. Tom, once again, I thank you so much for having been with us today. We are going to go ahead and go. And as always, have a wonderful day. And remember, you too can write a book. Yeah, get writing.